Hi, yeah, three. So I thought it might be nice to do um, uh, a year group story um, over the next week where I just read some chapters to you each day um, and you can follow along with the story if you want to um, or you can just listen um, and just enjoy the story. Uh, so in 3IW, we've been reading um, a story about a centipede and we've had lots of people that have been away and we've had lots of people that have had to isolate and all those types of things. So I thought the easiest thing, especially as 3S haven't read this fantastic story, is if we start again at the beginning of the story. So the story that we have been reading is called Harry, the Poisonous Centipede. And it's a story by Lynn Reed Banks. And it's also the first in a series. So if you really enjoy the story, then you'll be able to find some others of the same, by the same author and also with the same illustrator, the person who draws the pictures, uh, Tony Ross. So over the next few days, I'm going to read you a few chapters each day. And I hope that you enjoy the story. And I hope that you bear with me because there are some really, really difficult names in this story. <laughs> so if I pronounce them a bit differently at different times, please don't tell me off. OK, so I've downloaded the story as well. So that if you want to, you can follow along the, with the words or if you prefer, you can just listen to the story, whichever way around you want. So this is chapter one and it's called About Harry. Harry was a poisonous centipede. You may think that's not a very nice thing to be, but Harry thought it was fine. He'd never been anything else and he liked being what he was. If you told him centipedes are nasty, scary, creepy crawlies, he would have been very surprised and rather hurt. And if you told him that biting things with poisonous pincers was wrong or cruel, he'd probably have told you not to be ridiculous. How else would he get anything to eat or defend himself from creatures wanting to eat him? Of course, you couldn't have talked to Harry like that, even if you'd met him, because he wouldn't have understood you. Harry could only speak to other centipedes in centipedish. In fact, his real name wasn't Harry at all. It was, as nearly as I can write it, Bugzortzl. Bugzortzl? <laughs> yes. You see the problem at once. There are no vowel sounds in centipedish, just a sort of very faint crackling. What you could do is put in some vowel sounds, some A's, E's, I's, O's and U's, so that you can try and say his real name. Then you could call him Hixalittle or Hoxalotl, or perhaps even Haxalutl. But still, you wouldn't be anywhere near the real sound of his name, which is why I call him Harry. He lived in a very hot country, what we call the tropics, with his mother. Now, please don't start asking what her name was. Oh, no, please. Oh, all right, here goes. It was Bukvulbchuk, Bivilababchuk, Bokvalabubchuk, Bakvalabibchuk. I don't know. Why bother? We'll never get it right. Let's call her Belinda. Belinda was also, of course, a poisonous centipede, a very large one, a good eight inches long, or 20 centimetres, if you want to be metric about it. Just imagine eight inches of shiny, black, swift-moving centipede, a 20 centi centipede. Her body was something like a caterpillar's in segments, but covered with hard, shiny, dark stuff a sort of suit of armour, which is called a cuticle. Now, if you know a bit of Latin, you'll know that centipede means 100 feet. Some kinds of centipede do have that many, but Harry's kind didn't. Harry and his mother had 21 segments with one pair of legs to each segment, which makes 42 legs each. Quite a lot to keep track of when you think about it. But neither Belinda nor Harry ever did think about it. And more than you would think, any more than you would think how difficult, Harry would have said impossible, it is to move about on two legs. Well, they just did it. And did it when they had to, very, very fast indeed. 
Harry actually didn't know just how fast he could run until the dreadful time when, despite his mother's sternest warning, he went up the up pipe. Which is the story I'm going to tell you. And when I get round to it, there are some other stories to tell first. Chapter two, Belinda tells a scary story. Harry, as I told you, lived in a hot country, but he didn't know that for a long time because he didn't live on the surface of the earth where the sun shone a lot. He lived in a mass of dark, cool tunnels under the ground. He slept all through the day, but at night he would wake up and run along these lovely earthy tunnels looking for things to eat. What things? Well, if you must know. Worms, slugs, beetles, spiders, all kinds of insects and creepy crawlies that were smaller than him. He would chase after them, bite them, and when the poison from his poison claws had paralysed them, crunch them up. Well, crunch if they were crunchy like beetles, or munch if they were munchy like worms. Belinda, being much more than twice his size, could tackle big things like toads, small snakes, young mice and lizards. But then she could go up to the surface to hunt. Only for a short time, though. Centipedes mustn't get too dry or they can't breathe. And it's much easier to keep damp underground. If she heard something thumping about on the surface that sounded good to eat, she'd nip along an upgoing tunnel, scurry to the thumping thing, whatever it was. And if it wasn't too big, she would bite it with her poisonous pincers and drag it back down the tunnel to share it with Harry. Belinda was a very good mother. When Harry and her other babies first came out of their eggs, she didn't make, she'd didn't she make something like a little basket to keep them in and tended them carefully until they were old enough to fend for themselves. All her other children had gone off and left her, as young centipedes usually do. But Harry stayed. He loved her and she loved him, calling him love names like best in my nest and pride of my basket. She was always scared that something might happen to him, so she carefully warned him of any dangers. Of course, he didn't take much notice. He was a big, strong, armoured senti. That's a child centipede. With two fine poison claws who could run faster than anything he'd ever met. What could hurt him? Lots of things, Belinda said firmly. There are many things bigger than you, Huxultal. When you're grown up and go up to the big, open, no-top world, and you must not do so before, you'll find you're not the biggest thing around by any means, or even the fastest. And she told him about flying things that swooped down and grabbed you, and great legless belly crawlers, bigger than the tunnels the centipedes lived in, and enormous hairy things with huge sharp teeth and hot breath that could run even faster than the fastest centipede. But the most awful things of all, Belinda told him, the biggest and the most terrifyingly dangerous were humans. Of course, she pronounced it humans. I've nearly been killed by a human, his mother told him in a hushed tone, twice. Mama! Oh, yes. Once, when I couldn't find food in the tunnels, I had to go up in the bright time. All that bright light muddled me, and I got too far from the tunnel entrance. I was running back to it when a black shadow fell on me. Well, you don't know about shadows, because you've never been out when big yellow ball is shining. But it's a dark thing that falls on you. And when you feel that shadow... You have to run like mad. Why? Is it heavy? No, it doesn't weigh anything itself. But behind it, there is always something. And this something, this time, was a huge, heavy thing that came crashing down. It just missed me. I just ran out in time. And although I ran as fast as I could run, this huge heavy thing kept up with me and came crashing down again and again. We shouldn't. What happened, Mama? I dodged. 
I zigzagged, I ran as never before. Suddenly, I saw a tree with some leaves lying under it, and I raced for it and dived under the nearest leaf. But I didn't stop there, and just as well. As I ran under the leaves, hunting for a hole, the crashing thing came down just in front of me. I had to turn and run back into the open. Then I ran in every direction. Thank goodness I found a hole and rushed down it, just as the thing came smashing down again. Oh, Hicksortal, you can't think how nearly you lost your mama that time. And that was a human that was chasing you. How do you know? Because when I got my breath back and got nice and damp again, as well as nearly getting squashed, I'd nearly dried out. I peeped out of the hole and saw it walking away. I realised then that the crashing thing was a foot. It only had two, but they were enormous. How big, Mama? As long as me, and then as long as me again. And that's just its foot. She stood in front of him, waving her feelers in a very solemn way. And now that you are a big senti, I have something very important and dangerous to show you. Okay, we're going to stop the first, uh, the first of our two um, chapters there. I will read some more tomorrow and we will carry on tomorrow, okay? Um, so I will add some more chapters of the book and we will carry on uh, tomorrow. I hope that you're enjoying it so far. Okay, thanks, year three. Bye.